Today's video here, we got a two-parter. We have a 2007 full-size GM cluster. Uh, we're going to be repairing the display and doing an LED conversion. So here I just powered it up and we have dead displays. Let me just flick off the lights here and you can see. So this cluster kind of has that aqua color uh, to the backlighting. Sorry for the shake there. Uh, and we're going to be doing blue. Uh, the owner of this vehicle wants blue. I don't blame him. I'm not really a fan of the aqua. It's kind of eh, kind of uh, boring looking anyways. All right. So one thing at a time, though. So first thing I'm going to do is get that display working. And then once the display is taken care of, uh, I'll go over the LEDs. Okay, so let's see what we got here. All right, we got a MOSFET that has puked its brains. So, there we are right there. Sorry for the camera shake. I'm trying not to bump into my holder here but as you can see we've got a hole blown in the MOSFET which is uh, <clears throat> in control it runs the transformer which is in charge of powering the displays and here I know some people like to see these little dark marks in the corner and assume that they're burned out but no those are just oxygen indicators and black is good white means uh, oxygen has gotten inside the display and they're no good anymore um, all right, so I think what I'm going to do now, I could just go ahead and replace the MOSFET and see if it works, but I think I'm just going to make sure the 100 ohm resistor that uh, goes to the gate is still healthy. It looks okay. Yeah, it's still 100 ohms. Okay, I think we'll just have a straightforward MOSFET replacement here. Uh, let's switch over to the microscope. Let's power it up. Let's see if we have some life in those displays. All right, back to working. Okay. And now for the next part, uh, the blue LED switch over. Um, so first, let me just cover uh, the LEDs yeah, the LEDs that they use here just for backlighting, you're going to see two different styles of lights. We have the dummy indicator lights, which are just your basic off the shelf, 35, 28, uh, two leaded LEDs. And then the backlighting is done with something a little bit different. Just scoot this out of the way here. So the backlighting uh that these clusters use the correct full part number is a plcc-4 it is a well it's a 3528 plcc-4 and it has a common cathode and that means uh so it's it's a four leaded led so the led kind of sits on the pad something like this and there's going to be a corner notch indicating the polarity. Um, and this is a common cathode. So the opposite of the notch, this is going to be your positive. And then these other three leads, they're all just 
tie together and that's your negative. Um, now what I'm going to be using is just a more generic 3528. They're a little bit easier to come across. Um, and I'll be using a, a two leaded 3528. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm not going to be using this section, but I'm going to place my LED right here and use these two pads. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful of is that uh, the little pad on the LED doesn't come down too far and make contact with the negative because then you'll just make a short. Um, so uh, switch back to the microscope here and I think I'm going to show the two methods for removing these. Um, since they're four leaded, they're a little bit trickier with without hot air. Uh, so I'll show removal with hot air and then I'll show removal with two soldering irons. And we'll see, uh, I think the hot air is a little a little less damaging maybe, but that's for you guys to decide. Doesn't make any difference to me, they're coming off the board anyways. All right. All right, so there I just removed the RPM backlighting. So the first two were with just soldering irons. The last two were with hot air. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on the blue. I'm going to start with just the RPM so we can compare the, the lighting between the factory and the blue. So there I've just got done installing the four blue for the RPM. Give it a quick check. There we go, we got the four blue. Uh, let's see what it looks like with the face on. All right, and then if there were needles sitting in there, look something, just, gonna j just set those in there. Look something like that. And with the lens, so there you can see the intensity is pretty equal to OEM. All right, so it looks good. Now I'm just going to continue, do the same process to all the other 
backlighting LEDs. And I know people are going to harass me for the part number of LEDs I used. And here's the Mouser part number right there that should be in focus. And also note, these are 120 degree LEDs, so they're a very wide angle, which is important so you don't get the bright spots underneath um, where the LEDs are mounted. All right, so now I'm just going to finish this guy up. This one's all wrapped up. Now, a couple things to note is to try to not be tempted to buy the super cheap LEDs uh, through eBay, like from the Chinese sellers and things like that. Uh, you might uh, kick yourself later. Um, I'm using a King Bright brand, which is a, at least a fairly decent, reputable LED, so I'd expect these to last the life of the vehicle and, and then some. Uh, and also, this probably isn't quite a do-it-yourself uh, kind of a job with the LED install. Now, while the microscope and hot air station and two soldering irons aren't required to do this, um, it sure does help. So if all you have is the hardware hang soldering iron, uh, I probably wouldn't recommend to attempt to do this. Uh, I might want to send it out or practice on uh, a practice board before you go at your cluster. But uh, yeah, I think that wraps up this one. So thanks again, guys. See you next time.